Hi, and welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Koosje Koene and I am here to draw and to learn and to share all my learnings with you. Today I want to work in my grey toned sketchbook. It's almost finished. I'm at the second last page and throughout working in my grey toned sketchbook I learned a lot. I made mistakes and I had some aha moments there. So today I want to play in my grey toned sketchbook with you and hopefully you pick up something from it and maybe you can learn something from it. And I will be using a photo that I found online when I was doing a little bit of research on Edinburgh because I will be traveling to Edinburgh this summer. I'll be teaching a workshop with Studio 56 Boutique and there are just a few tickets still left. So if you want to join me, then follow the link that I am adding below this video in the comment box. Let's dive in. Okay, let's take a look at a few pages that I find successful. This one, for example, is done with gouache. I started with dabs of yellow gouache for the face, the arms and the people in the background. And then I added blue gouache and on top of that I added line and then brought it all together with a little bit of white colored pencil. Don't worry, I will show all of the pages once I have filled this whole book and I'll give you a sketchbook tour. But here's another one that I really like with gouache. The bright color stands out so nicely. In this drawing I discovered the magic of negative spaces when using color like this. Look at the legs, they are all negative space. Posca pen worked really well in this sketchbook. They are like chalk markers and I used a yellow marker and a blue marker and also a pink one to indicate all the shapes first and then I started to add line and with white colored pencil and a little bit of gray I added the background. Here I was having fun with the overhanging awning in front. I kept that gray, the gray of the paper and then I colored some of the houses in repeating colors. I think limited palettes are key when you are using a toned background because then you really make use of the toned background and how it works along with your lines and marks. Speaking of marks, I used a Posca marker to indicate the people, their arms, their heads and their legs. I drew on top with black colored pencil and then something was missing so I added pink checkers on the tables and also I added a little bit of background just for some mark making and giving it a little bit more context along with the lines on the floor. Posca marker again, bright, bright pink. I really like how this turned out with just Posca marker, black colored pencil, a little bit of pink colored pencil and white colored pencil. This one you might recognize. I filmed the whole process when I was in Lisbon and shared it here as a Draw Tip Tuesday video. Bright colors, they work really well. Just one bright color and then looking at the shapes that stand out or that catch the light. That's what I did here and then I had a lot of fun mark making in the background and of course drawing people too with black colored pencil. And the fun thing is this was also on an urban sketching trip with Studio 56 Boutique. This was in Malta and I'll be going to Edinburgh and we'll be tackling the views there. And if you sign up, we'll do it together. This was also in Malta, same technique as the previous drawing, only with fountain pen on top. Here I was drawing with a friend and I used that technique of first making some blobs for the face and the hands and also the faces and hands of the people behind my friend. And then I started to draw on top with black brush pen and adding some details with a pink crayon and some white and also some white for the background to pull it all together. And here we are, let's fill this double page. I mentioned the Posca marker and this is quite similar, only it is from the brand Pilot. I'll be using a blue crayon. This is Carandash Neo Color 1. I'll use a Carandash Luminance black colored pencil. And I'm selecting a black, a white and a light yellow 
crayon from Caran d'Ache, the Neo Color 1. So now I have a nice color palette of blue, black, and yellow, which probably is enough, but I will also set aside my yellow Posca marker and maybe I can use my Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Since my crayons are a little bit dirty and blunt, I am sharpening them. So I am shaving off the dirt and I will have a little bit of a sharper tip, but I do like them blunt. And I'll sharpen my colored pencil as well. Okay, ready to go. Give this one a little shake so the paint inside will mix and uh, will be ready to be applied. Looking at my reference photo, I first want to color the sky. And by coloring the sky, I am actually coloring the negative shape of the building. So now I am already looking at the building, but only around it. So I have like this big blob of sky. And then later on, I can go and add details to the building. Probably I could have done that a little bit more accurate, but now it's on the page. So let's just embrace what I got and let's move on. So I'm starting with that little tower in the background, adding some of the sky that we can see through it. And well, it didn't quite work out my negative space, but I'm just drawing on top and probably it will work out. We'll see. This is exactly how the drawing process goes. You are trying things out and you are learning as you are doing things. So if you're wondering like, how can I get more confidence when I'm drawing? Well, the only way to get more experience and then get more confidence about what you can do is by doing things and trying things out and being a little bit courageous. And let's not forget, it is just paper, right? It is just a drawing. Nothing is going to go terribly wrong. Yes, you might make a drawing that could have been better or that you're not that happy with, but seriously, it is just drawing. You are having fun and that is what it's all about. And sure, if you are struggling through the drawing, it might not always feel like fun, but that is part of learning. Sometimes you need a little bit of pain to gain, right? Not that I'm saying that drawing or being an artist or art should be a struggle, but I am saying that you need to step out of your comfort zone every so often so that you are challenging yourself. A little challenge goes a long way. And even though I am at the almost last page of this sketchbook, I am learning every time. I need to figure things out every time that I draw in this sketchbook because it's out of my comfort zone to not draw on white paper. And yeah, you can draw on gray paper just like you would on white paper, but you can benefit from the toned background and learning how to do that best. Well. The only way to learn is to fill a whole sketchbook and then you'll have a few pages that you're like, yeah, this really worked. And you will also have quite a few pages that taught you that some approaches will not work on toned paper. And that is exactly what I learned from filling this sketchbook. I didn't use it as my daily sketchbook. I just had it on the side because I didn't want to have a gray toned paper for my daily drawings every day. So it was really great actually as a side project. And that way I could just grab it whenever I felt like it or whenever I felt like giving myself a little bit of a challenge. It took me a few months to fill it as opposed to my daily sketchbooks. I probably fill one every month. But because I didn't use it on a daily basis, I did bring it on trips as well. So there are quite a few trips in the sketchbook, which I will all show you in an upcoming Draw Tip Tuesday video in which I will do a sketchbook tour and talk a little bit more about my learnings in this sketchbook. By now I have let go of the fact that my negative space wasn't as accurate as I wished it would have been. 
And now I'm just really having fun uh, adding texture on the building itself using my crayon and my colored pencil. And this is a great opportunity to introduce my yellow crayon so that I can create that grass in a different color. And now I also want to play a little bit with my white crayon again to give the indication of clouds in the sky. To give the grass a little bit more chunkiness, I can use that yellow Posca pen and adding some black lines as well gives it some contrast. Okay, let's see and assess. I think it needs a little bit more contrast here and there, so I'm using my black colored pencil for that, just to show that those bricks are all different shades, but not too much because I don't want to overwork this and I kind of like the simplicity of this. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. I sure did. I think next time I will take a few different decisions, but I had fun. It didn't take that long either. And sometimes if you put more effort and more time in a sketch, it will get better, but sometimes you just feel done. And maybe that was what happened to me with this drawing. I was just done and I kind of like how it came out. So I'm all happy and I really hope that you will try this too. You don't need to buy a toned sketchbook. You can also just use a brown paper bag or maybe a piece of cardboard where something was delivered in. You can really be creative about these things if you want to try something like a toned paper background for your drawings. So yeah, that is your assignment for this week. Do a drawing on toned paper. You can just create a wash in your sketchbook with watercolors first, you know, make a gray or a brownish wash. Don't make it too dark and then draw on top of that and use some different tools maybe because you will have to play with your negative space and with your contrast and maybe you can add some crazy bright colors. It'll be really fun to try it out. And just so you know, my patrons are gifting you this video because they are contributing with a small fee for subscription every month uh, on my Patreon page. And with that, they help me to keep making these videos every week. So if you are watching this video for free, just know that it was a gift from one of my patrons. And if you'd like to join us, on Patreon, you are ever so welcome because we have a wonderful community going on there. I am, of course, giving more content than just these weekly videos. There's a lot of uh, stuff going on. I have weekly assignments, pro tips, ideas, and much more that you will get if you come join me on Patreon. I will put the link below in the comment box of this video. And just one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button, and then you will get a notification every time that I publish a new video. I'll see you next week. Bye.